Good morning, everybody. We would like to welcome you to our Mother's Day service here at Jasonville Assembly of God. We are so happy that you have joined with us on FM 88.1 in the drive-in service. I was out front here just a little bit ago and saw that the north parking lot is, is uh, pretty much full. People are being directed to go to the south and the west parking lots. And we're so happy that you're here with us today on Mother's Day. And uh, I'm kind of excited about this day. We, we had planned to hold the service outdoors today, but there was a forecast of rain that kind of scared us off a little bit. So we came back indoors, and then what happened? The sun came out. It's a beautiful day out there today. But either way, we're going to give thanks to the Lord for all the blessings that he has so abundantly showered down upon us God is so good, so good, so faithful. Let's just open the service in prayer this morning. Precious Heavenly Father, we approach the throne of grace today with hearts that are full of gratitude and thanksgiving. We honor you today as our creator. We honor you as our redeemer. We seek you as our father. And Lord, we pray that you would release the power and presence of your Holy Spirit into this fellowship this morning, wherever people are, in their vehicle or at their, in their home or in the auditorium. Lord, may we sense the activity of God in our lives today. And Lord, may we humble ourselves as we approach your throne of grace and ask for help from above. Lord, we, we know that the resources of heaven are more than enough for all the needs of our lives. Heavenly Father, we especially pray that you would touch the moms today, encourage them. May they feel blessed, and Lord, we honor them for the role that they play in the family. And Father, we give you praise and thanks now for all that you have in store in service this morning. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's hear some of those horns honking out there in the parking lot. I'm excited to get started. Dave Parker's coming to lead us in our worship. So let's join in together with all my hope is in Jesus. Come on ahead, Dave. Oh, my sins are forgiven. 
a change your entire lifestyle that affects the nation in the way that it has in the world, um, you know, you can only do, you can do one of two things. You can either rely on your own strength and your own wisdom and ability, or you can turn to God. And we've seen evidence all around the country and all around the world that people are turning to God in this time of distress. I think that's a good strategy. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of God, and he will lift you up. We come to God realizing that he's the one that holds the answer. He's the one that has the solution. We're going to go to him in prayer this morning. And as we pray, we want to pray for the needs of the people, but we also want to pray especially for, uh, for our moms on this Mother's Day. Uh, this is a just really an extra special day. I think it's so appropriate to honor our moms uh, because everybody has one. Now, my mom is no longer with us in this world, but she's crossed over to the other side. She's waiting in heaven, and I'm looking forward to seeing her again. If you have your mom with you on this earth today, you are blessed, and I encourage you to take this opportunity to honor her and to bless her, and just do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just do whatever you have to do to, or whatever you're able to do to Give her a, an extra special day. To give her a lift and a, an encouragement. Let's pray together, shall we? Precious Heavenly Father, on this special day that's been set aside to remember the work and the, the purpose of, of mothers in the home, Lord, it, it warms our heart to think of how our moms have made such an impact upon our lives. They are the caregivers, they're the nurturers, they're, they're the comforters. They're the ones that uh, always uh, you can always lean on, you can always look to, you can always uh, go to your mom and, uh, and she's uh, like a rock that will help you to, uh, to make it through all of the hard places in life. And she's the one that brings a special sense of, of comfort in knowing that, uh, that you're accepted and that you're wanted and that you're important in the family. Lord, we pray that you would bless all the moms today in, in attendance in the drive-in service, those that are watching my Facebook Live. We pray, Lord, that you would manifest your presence in their lives and, and just confirm your love toward them. Lord, would you help each one of them to enjoy this day and to uh, do the work that they do as a mom with, with all their heart, with all their soul, that our families might be successful. The moms are so important in the family and uh, they're, the family's under a lot of stress in our world today. We pray you give the moms strength and raise up women of faith to be leaders in their homes, to, to be uh, prayer warriors, to be the glue that holds the family together. Father, we just pray blessing over each home and each family, and especially each of the moms that are connected to this service today. We'll give you the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, uh, if you're at uh, drive-in service today, we uh, have a special gift for all the moms, all the ladies, actually. You don't have to be a mom biologically if you're a woman today, high school graduate or above. And that includes uh, graduating this year. We want you to have a potted flower. And if you did not receive one when you drove through on the north side of the church, um, we, uh, we just invite you to come up to the front double doors on the north side, and the fellows there will apologize for overlooking you, for missing you. Make sure that you get one. And listen, if, if you have uh, a uh, relative, maybe, who's not able to get out today because uh, they're uh, confined in the home, because of the virus or whatever, make sure you pick up a potted plant to take home to them to make their Mother's Day special. Uh, we just want this small token to be a reminder to the moms that you are loved and that you are important and that you're special. Now we also have a special feature in our Mother's Day service that is kind of a fun time and uh, we've done this for several years now. We have hanging baskets of flowers that are really very nice and we have them in the gymnasium. And we've got 12 of them. We're going to have a drawing today. 
And uh, you know, you read in the Bible how they would cast lots for certain things. That was part of the, the Jewish tradition in the Old Testament. And they also cast lots in the New Testament when it was time to uh, choose a replacement for the disciple or apostle Judas. So this is not without biblical precedent here today. Very experienced uh, person coming to help us today, that is T.J. Hill, who has been doing this now for several years. He's very experienced in in drawing the uh, the names. And uh, hold that up, would you, T.J.? All right. Now that is what does that say? January on there? Yep. Okay, that says January. And uh, now you're you're not. Uh, this is not rigged, is it? It is not rigged. The past couple of years, we thought we thought so. Okay. Right. There were some suspicions that maybe this had been fixed, but uh, at last count, there were over 80 names in these uh, drawing bags. There's 12 of them, and they're, they're spread pretty evenly throughout uh, the months of the year. So we're just going to go through and uh, draw one uh, name out of each of these Ziploc bags. Um, and then here's what we want you to do. If your name is drawn, after the service, if you would come up to the uh, gymnasium, into the gymnasium, uh, the north side doors <clears throat> are open, and there's uh, several tables in there, and the hanging baskets are on the tables, and uh, just come in and, and pick out the one that uh, you would like to take home with you, if your name is drawn. So there's 12 potted plants, and we're going to draw 12 names. TJ, draw the name for January, and I see he's not looking. Nope. So what do we have here? We have Roberta DeSham. All right, Roberta DeSham. Now, I don't know if Roberta is able to be with us today or not, but uh, Roberta, if you are listening, I know uh, probably some of your family are here. And uh, we want you to have one of the hanging baskets. Do you have, are you ready with February? Ready with February. Okay. Ready for you. <laughs> Who do we have for February? Paula Jones. Paula Jones. Way to go, Paula. I'm not sure if Paula is able to be here today or not, but her name was drawn. Congratulations to Paula. Happy Mother's Day to you. And uh, let's go on to March. <clears throat> This is moving a little quicker than it normally does, but we kind of streamlined it here for the format that we have here today. All right, so March we have Cricket Kramer. Cricket Kramer. Did you hear that, Cricket? Let me hear your horn honk out there, because you have won one of the hanging baskets. Okay, congratulations, Cricket, and happy Mother's Day. Okay. And now we're going on to April. the month of April, we have Kathy Brummett. Kathy Brummett. Hey, Kathy, happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, now I'm not sure if Kathy is here today or not, but I uh, want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And by the way, uh, yeah, these are all separated by birth date. Did I say that, baby? I believe you did. Yeah. Uh, by, uh, so everybody, now you have May, how about you, TJ? Yes. So all the names in there have May birthdays. Yep. Right. We have Linda Singleton. Linda Singleton. Uh, she's a great mom. She loves her family. And Linda, congratulations to you. You were your name was drawn for the month of May, and um, you may come up after service and pick out a potted plant, a hanging basket from the gymnasium. Now let's move on to June. Dina Hansford. Way to go, Dina. Hey, Dina, happy Mother's Day. You're an awesome mom. And uh, you come on up after service is over to the gymnasium, and there will be a hanging basket for you. God bless you real good. Now let's go to July. Month of July is Jamie Griffith. Jamie Griffith. All right, congratulations, Jamie. Happy Mother's Day to you. You are a wonderful mother. You're a blessing in the church. And uh, congratulations on winning one of the, on your name being drawn for the hanging basket. 
Our, where, where are we at here, TJ? The we month at? of August. The month of August. All right. We have Peggy Copeland. Peggy Copeland. Congratulations, Peggy. Peggy, are you here today? And if you are, come on up after service and get your hanging basket. And happy Mother's Day to you. Now we're going to September. These are the ladies whose birthday, like I said, we had over 80 names entered in the um, hanging basket drawing. Uh, all, pretty much all of our regular attenders are in there, and then others who are here at service today have been added as well. All right, so for the month of September, we have Brittany Duckworth. Brittany Duckworth for the month of September. Congratulations, Brittany. She's a fairly new mom, and uh, just how many years? Maybe three years or so. Brittany, hope you have a wonderful day, and you have won a hanging basket, and I hope you enjoy an extra special day today on Mother's Day. Hey, this is fun, isn't it, TJ? It's a pretty good time. It's yeah, time. it's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Even though we can't see the reaction of the ladies because I we're not in here. I miss the headlight. Yeah, I miss that too. But we're going on to October now. All right, so for the month of October, we have Sammy Melcher. Sammy Melcher. All right. I think Sammy's probably, I'm not for sure if she's here. She may be listening by Facebook Live. But Sammy, you have been, uh, your name has been drawn for the month of October and one of those hanging baskets is going to your home. And I hope it will be a reminder to you that you are loved and appreciated in your church family. God bless you. Now we're going on to November. Yep. We have Carol Fulford. Carol Fulford, all right. Now, um, everybody knows Carol. She's not only a member of the church, but she's also our, our church bookkeeper and secretary. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, Carol is here today or not, but Carol, if you are listening to me today, you have been chosen for the month of November. You have been, your name has been drawn. So you are our winner for the month of November. All right, and I think we have one left. Is there one, one month left in the year? I, I believe so. Yeah. And that would be? Uh, December. That would be December, okay. Well, who do we have for December? Karen Kelly. Karen Kelly. All right, congratulations, Karen. Okay, for the month of December, we have Karen Kelly. Congratulations, Karen, and God bless you real good. Well, there you have it. We've drawn 12 names for our Mother's Day drawing. That was a lot of fun. And like, I, like T, TJ and I were uh, discussing here, I did miss the reactions of the ladies because it's always a fun time for them and it's a way for the, the church to, the church family to just show support and to encourage our moms and to bless them and to thank them for the contribution that each one of them make. For those of you whose names weren't drawn, we want you to know that even though you are not taking home a hanging basket today, uh, your, your family members will probably go out and buy one for you, hint, hint. So you'll be able to have some nice flowers now that the weather's warming up and uh, we're getting into the growing season. Well, that was sure, sure a lot of fun. Um, today for Mother's Day, our youth pastor, Phoebe Birch, is going to bring the message. And this is uh, the first message that Phoebe is preaching as a credentialed minister of the gospel. Just recently, Scott and Phoebe both received ministry credentials and were hired by the church to lead our, our youth program. And youth activities have kind of uh, been, uh, have kind of gone online here lately. There's not been a whole lot of uh, getting together for anybody. Uh, but during this time of the, of the COVID crisis, Scott and Phoebe have really been invaluable with their uh, technical expertise and helping us to get our Facebook Live going and, and all of the components of what we're doing, of how we're doing church right now, they have just really been a tremendous asset to the church. And we're so thankful that they're on board and, and leading the, uh, the youth program and the church 
right now. And Phoebe, I, I believe that uh, your your son came home for Mother's Day today. He did. And he's not only uh, listening, but he's here in the auditorium today. And he's going to be running the equipment, uh, helping to run the equipment that Phoebe normally does. So Phoebe, God bless you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And thank you for the message that the Lord has given you to deliver to God's people. May it be a message that will inspire and bless and comfort and guide and lead us all closer to the Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. God bless you. morning, though as Pastor Bush said, this is the first time I'm bringing the message to the congregation, so it's definitely a little bit odd to be just standing in front of the camera with uh, nobody, well, not very many in the sanctuary anyway. We've got Pastor Bush and Marcia here, and as Pastor Bush said, uh, Trevor and Heather came home this morning for Mother's Day, and so I'm thrilled to have them here with me, and um, of course, little Audrey and Scott running the sound, so we're going to plug through this and see where we get. But I also want to uh, say that I'm thankful that my mom and my aunt, I believe, are out in the parking lot this morning listening on the radio. So for those of you listening on the radio, um, wish you a happy Mother's Day as well. And all those out on Facebook and Facebook virtual world. So um, let's just open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the wonderful mothers that we have and for all of the significant people in our lives and that have mothered us and mentored us through the years. And I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would just shower blessings on each and every one today. Lord, I pray, Lord, that today as we celebrate, we know that there are also those that are hurting during this time. We have some, like Pastor Bush had mentioned earlier, that have lost their mothers, and today is sometimes especially difficult for them. We pray for those who just long to be mothers and uh, just have that ache within them. And I pray that we would just remember them today. And Lord, for those who have had challenging relationships with their mothers and um, that struggle along the way and those who may have lost a child, but Lord, all of us have a mother in some capacity and we just thank you for them. We thank you for the role that they play and we thank you for those in our lives who are either spiritual mothers or who have stepped in to play that role for others as either step parents, foster parents, or Lord, just as I said, the spiritual mothers in our lives. And we pray, Lord, especially today during this challenging time for those who might not be able to spend time with their families and with their mothers today. We know some when their health is compromised and um, so some of us have to continue to be out and about a little bit and we just worry about carrying things to our mothers, and so we just pray for those relationships, and that even though we aren't able to be with them, that you would just bless them and let them know that they are loved. And I pray, Lord, for those in the congregation who just need a special touch for you in some other way. Lord, whether it be physical, emotionally, or spiritually, you know what we are all going through, and I just pray that you would lift us all up. And Lord, lastly, I just ask that you speak through me today, that I deliver this message Lord, that it is the words that you would have each and every one who is within earshot, that they would get the message that you would have them to receive from my words. We thank you for this beautiful day, and I just pray that you bring blessings upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as I started to prepare, one of the first things I thought was, what is Mother's Day, and where did it originate? We all know we have moms. <laughs> Many of us are moms. Um, and but where did the holiday itself come from? And so a quick Google search brought me to the fact that the original celebration honoring moms was in 1908 by Anna Jarvis. And um, she was encouraging of the government and everybody to make it a national holiday. And um, she did this in honor of her mother who had passed away. So I know that you know, many people struggle on Mother's Day because their mothers aren't with us, but I found it interesting that the holiday was created for just that reason, to honor the mother that had gone before. 
And Anna said in establishing the holiday that she believed a mother is the person who has done more for you than anyone in the world. And many of us can attest to that. Our mothers have been the backbone of our lives and they've strengthened us and encouraged us throughout our lives and given us many things. And Anne said that her mother, she was a peace activist who cared for wounded soldiers in the Civil War and she created Mother's Day work clubs to address public health issues that were out there. And so many of our moms, we know, um, have volunteered through the years. They've helped when our, you know, when our kids have activities, we've stepped in and helped and volunteered and done things. But no matter what, whether our mom has been the one to volunteer or she's been the single mom to help hold down the household or whatever role she has played, all of our moms have touched our lives in many, many ways. So this morning, I'd like to um, start out by reading what many of us think of in the Bible as the perfect example of a, good, a godly wife and mother, and that comes from Proverbs 31. And many of us have heard these verses many times, but they hold true for all of, not all of our mothers, but the majority of our mothers, and even those of us who don't attain these standards, we strive to do so. But I'm going to start in verse 25 in Proverbs 31 says she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instruction with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. When I read those verses and I read that line, you surpass them all, I think I, like most mothers, think I don't fall into that category. Many times in our lives we struggle. We don't speak with kindness to our children and we stumble along the way. And, but I do hope that in some regards my husband and my son, I'm going to get choked up here, um, think about me that in that way in some regards. Um, but I know my mom definitely fell into that category. Whew. She did many, many things for us growing up as a single mom, and I thank her for that. Love you, Mom. Um, regain my composure. But as mothers, we often judge ourselves, and we often worry that we're not doing a good job, and we look down and think that, you know, our house isn't good enough, what we do isn't good enough, and we struggle along the way. But I, like many mothers out there, know that our moms teach us many, many things. And so as I thought about the message I was going to prepare today and the fact that, you know, here we are all on the cusp of being able to get back out into the world, we're hoping to be able to start services up inside the building here in the next few weeks anyway. And we're all struggling with that idea of, you know, what are we missing? Why are we all just struggling to bust out of our doors? And so I was thinking about that and I was thinking about mothers and what our moms teach us and thinking about how in the world do we think about these things in combination and together. But I came up with three things and I posted on Facebook earlier this week just asking, you know, what is it you're missing? What is it that you wish you had during this time of isolation? And the number one thing that people responded with was relationships. You know, we miss our friends, we miss our families, we're ready to be out in relationship with other people, and when we stop and think about it, you know, our moms are the ones that create that, we created the first relationship and the first bond with here on earth, and you know, she teaches us many things throughout our lives, and helps us develop a sense of who we are and um, how we relate to other people and how we interact with others in relationship. Secondly, one of the things that people mentioned and some of us feel is our struggle with feeling like our control has been taken away from us. You know, we've been asked to stay at home. Some people have lost their jobs, um, at least temporarily. Some, you know, maybe even permanently. And um, feeling that sense of loss of control is difficult. But I want you to think about your teenage years. 
what, what's life like for a mother when she has a child going through her teenage years? <laughs> Not always enjoyable, right? Um, I can say that as Trevor passed through his teenage years, we didn't have too many major issues, but with, uh, just as with any relationship, there's always that growing and uh, adapting and adjusting stage that you go through. And so that too is a sense of, you know, as a parent, you feel like you're losing control and uh, you feel like you don't have control over what your children do in every minute anymore. And they wanna make their own decisions and they wanna go out and do life on their own. And as we, as mothers encourage and want, <laughs> Trevor's laughing at me back there, um, as we want our children to grow and be wonderful independent adults, it's also difficult during those teenage years and the early college years and um, as they do that, just that, and move beyond. And so our mothers have, we try to instill in our children that sense of how to control ourselves and how to interact with other people and um, just how to relate with others and maintain some sense of control in our lives. But finally, and the most important thing that I want to touch on this morning is many of us have talked and posted pictures and uh, commented about the activities that we miss. You know, the spring softball seasons, baseball seasons, track and field, many of those things have been completely canceled or at least postponed for a period of time. And for many of us, that's difficult. And so you start to think about why is that? Why do we miss those activities? And why is it that we um, want to be back at them other than to just be out of our houses? And I think what that comes back to is that these activities that we are involved in tie us to our sense of community. You know, and when we think about it, our families are the first, quote, community that we learn to function in and we uh, interact with the individuals in our homes, etc. But the activities that we choose to participate in develop the community that we are often a part of. And so when we're missing these activities, what we really often are missing is the greater sense of community that we get from those. Um, as I was thinking about that last night, I thought about the fact that you know, many of the seniors are graduating and their parents weren't able to experience a lot of those final activities. And I thought about the fact that when Trevor was a senior, how difficult that was to uh, go through some of those final moments and what they are missing. And so um, a lot of that sense of um, coming to an end revolves around the community that we feel like we're stepping away from. So, um, kind of to summarize all of that, you know, we need to stop and think about as when we think about the church and how we're functioning in the church, you know, are we taking these three things, relationship, the control in our lives, in the community that we function in, and are we dedicating our relationships, our control, and our activities to the Christian community and the service that we need to be providing for the church? And you know, the great commandment is that we go and tell everybody. So are we using these things to do just that? Um, first of all, our most important relationship that we can have is with God, and we have this extra time right now to work and to develop that relationship. Um, 1 John 3, 1 says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. So it's hard for us sometimes to think about ourselves as children of God, but that is in fact what we are. And he desires a relationship with each and every one of us. And so the most important relationship that we need to think about, even as we're missing our friends and our families and those relationships that we're used to every day, you know, I hope that some of you have taken this time in isolation and the time that we've had at home to help strengthen our relationship with God. And then we think about control, you know, and that's a big one right now because we do feel like we've lost many of the things that we're used to doing. We've lost the ability to make some of the decisions we normally make. 
because of the restrictions that the government has put on us, etc. And um, you know what we have to remember in First Peter five, six, and seven, the Bible says, "Humble yourselves." You know, we don't have to be in control. We need to humble ourselves. Amen. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, Amen. that He may lift us up in due time, and cast all of your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. So he's got things in control, even when we sometimes feel a sense of being out of control. And we need to stand on the promises that he has. And then finally, I want to touch on the fact that, you know, are we living in Christian community like I mentioned? Are we spending our time chasing all the earthly activities that are out there? You know, I don't want to, anyone to think that I'm saying softball and baseball and all of those activities are bad, but we need to balance the activities that we do outside of the church with the activities that we're doing for God and the fact that, you know, we are ultimately to be spreading his word. So um, are we focused on building that community of Christ? That look like? I've recently been skimming and reading through a book, and I've got it here for with me, but it's called Just Open the Door, and it talks about how one generation, or one invitation, sorry, how one invitation can change a generation, and, you know, so many of us, like I said earlier, we worry about the fact that our homes aren't clean, we worry about the fact that, you know, everything might not be up to par to the person that we want to invite over, and so we have a tendency not to invite people into our homes, and, uh, so anybody that knows me knows that's something I've never been very good at. I've always hesitated to invite people into the house. And we joke that if you've been inside of our house, you should consider yourself privileged because we have a tendency to use our home as a shelter and a place away. And we haven't brought many people in, but I'm trying to change that because that is one thing that I haven't just, or I've disliked about the way that, you know, I have functioned. Um, and so I want to read a quote from this book that really struck home to me. It says, Our home is a place where everyone is welcome. Yet may I never wait until I'm ready to swing the doors wide open. Because if I wait, it will never happen. And so how many of us in life live our lives that way? Um, like I said, that's definitely been my story. But I've been thinking about this and you know, thinking about how that pertains to the church. And are we, as a church, swinging our doors wide open? Are we inviting people in, and are we accepting them for however they are when they walk through the door? It's easy to see somebody come in the church that doesn't look like us, somebody that doesn't look like they're very well off. You know, maybe they stumble in the church um, a little bit intoxicated or a little bit... Um, distracted by the things of the world and do we as a church open our hearts and our souls to them or do we have a tendency to kind of keep that door closed and keep ourselves sheltered away from those people in a judgmental way and i pray that we don't do that here at the, our church um, but i think we all have a tendency to be that way a little bit when somebody's a little bit different and so if you're here at the church and in the back parking lot Perhaps you saw the uh, kind of the backdrop that I had set up. That's something April did last year for Mother's Day, and I wanted to continue, and I wasn't sure how that was going to work with all the social distancing, but I set up a backdrop out there that if you're in the back parking lot and you want to pop out and take a picture with your family, you have that opportunity. But I have a door there and flowers around it similar to the entrance of a, um, a home, and I did that purposely kind of as an example and a thought for something to trigger in your mind that we need to just open our doors to others and we need to open our doors to the community. Um, one of the things that I am most thankful for in recent last couple of years is the small groups and our, what we call life groups here at the church. And I'm so blessed by my life group. I love each and every one of you. And I'm able to take that first step and get together Friday night, but just as the weather 
changed our plans this morning and also changed our plans on Friday night. It was a little bit cool out there to be outside and we were trying to um, have a little bit of a cookout or something. Local community, no Kathy May, that runs the pizza bill here in town. She touched my life in a great way because mom often worked she wasn't able to take me to softball practices and she wasn't able to allow me to participate in many of those things but kathy Alt was my softball coach as a young child and she always ensured that i got to softball practice that i was there that i got home afterwards and she just played a tremendous role and impacted me greatly by helping um, me be able to participate in some of those things and then, you know, we have the family members. Like I said, my Aunt Melissa's out here in the parking lot with my mom today. And a lot of times when mom would work holidays and um, be gone, my Aunt Melissa would step up and she would take me with her to their family events. And so, we all have these people in our lives that we come into contact with that to us, you know, what we do for others might not be a big deal. We may see it as something trivial, but the person we're impacting, um, it may stick with them their whole life and it may mean a great deal. So, um, Matthew 25 and 34 says, that which we have done for the least of these, you have done for me. So what we have to remember is that as we reach out into these kids' lives and into even other adults' lives, when we open our homes and we um, invite others into our community, we are blessing you know, them, but we are also doing the work of God, and that's what we need to remember. And in Luke, 10, earlier in Luke 10, in verse 27, it says, You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your strength, and all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so that's just what I encourage you to do today, um, is to expand your idea of community, an idea of how you open your life up to those around us, whether it be inviting them into the church or literally inviting them into your home. I know... <laughs> Right now, that's difficult to stay when we can't really invite people into our homes. But there are many ways to reach out in community to people right now, whether it's to send them a card, just deliver a small present to their house. Um, you know, many, many ways we can touch the lives of others, even when we can't physically open the doors to our homes. So, but more than anything, um, when we think about opening the door, I just want to encourage you all to think about back to that relationship that you have with Christ. And in Revelations 3.20, the verse says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. So as we think about opening our homes to others, I pray more than anything that you open your heart and your uh, mind to Christ and that you, you know, do live your life for him. So... I just want to thank you all for listening this morning, um, and I pray that in some way this message has blessed you, and then I'll turn this back over to Pastor Bush, but we'll close in prayer as we do that. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this message that you gave me this morning, and I just pray that for those that are listening, that you would just stir in our hearts and in our minds the chance and the opportunities that we have, that we would see them to reach in and allow others to touch our lives and to bless them in um, a mighty way. But Lord, more than anything, I pray that if there's anybody listening this morning that doesn't have a relationship with you, I pray that as you stand at that door and knock, that they would open their hearts and minds to you. And Lord, just pray that you would come into their lives, that you would forgive them, and that they would um, completely trust and rely on you for their um, lives moving forward. We love you and we praise you and thank you for these many things. In Jesus' name, amen. Baby, thank you for that. Hey, that was a very heartfelt message. We appreciate that very much. God.
bless you. Thank you. God bless you very much. You know, Phoebe spoke about the the influence that a mother has and talked about all the people in her life that had an impact upon her, changed the course of her life and encouraged her along the journey. And like Phoebe said, it was so important for us to stay in community, to stay together, to uh, to look to the blessings and benefits that as we share life together, we can help each other along the way. And most of all, that we invite Jesus Christ into our lives to be our, our role model, to be our, our strength and to be our wisdom, but most of all, to be our personal Savior for the saving of our soul. And uh, I want to close out with the song, I Give You My Heart. This is something that we can all do. God has given so much to us. He's given us life. He's given, he's given us family and church. He's given us friendships and relationships. But He's given us all those things. And the question is, what have we given to Him? Well, we can give Him our heart. And let's just think about doing that this morning, as Phoebe said, as we close service with this song. This is my desire to all Day to all the moms. Amen.